Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on this channel. I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're doing another video on soil amendments. If you haven't watched the whole series, then please do check it out. I will leave the playlist up here. As always, we're going to be talking about the cation and exchange capacity, the pH and the porosity, because those are the three things that are important to nutrient bioavailability the actual microbiome of the soil and just plant health in general if all three of those terms went right over your head then please do check out the beginning of the series it's like a crash course in soil science it will it will make you happy um it's some great christmas fun christmas knowledge hope you don't get too bored if you guys uh, want, I was just thinking about next week and how it's Christmas time and how you probably don't want any crazy science videos. So I was thinking of doing one video on snake plants because there were quite a few that were interested in seeing all the snake plants I had. So I was thinking of doing one on that. And then I was thinking of doing another one that's just a Q&A. So if you guys wanna throw your questions that you want me to answer down below, please do. They can range from plants to soil to personal, my animals, I don't care, ask me anything. I will answer all of them. Just put the questions below this video and I'll be sure to get to them next week. But for everyone else that's impatient and only here for the answers regards to if you should use Cinderite in your soil, this is the part of the video you care about. This actually was requested by quite a few subscribers, and so here I am to talk about it. I initially was hesitant on doing a video about this because I just assumed it was the same as pumice, but this stuff is not the same as pumice. This is totally different. So let's just jump into it. Cinderite is lava sand. So whereas pumice is lava, rocks that have been broken down this is kind of more of a sand to the rocky side um, but from a different type of lava flow or the way that the lava flow settled out which means um, it does have to be mined but it doesn't have to be heated like a secondary heating process similar to like vermiculite or perlite is this is this is very similar to pumice in that sense however the water retention side is the total opposite of pumice. So pumice is an aeration and a basically a poor increaser and just helps the water flow out of the system. Cinderite actually helps hold moisture in the soil to an extent, um, more so than pumice does. What makes cinderite so unique is actually its porosity and specifically the porosity on the surface of the product. It is very ideal, with a high cation exchange capacity and the perfect surface for microbial activity. So this is a biological support amendment. Um, when you place this in your soil, it gives little homes to all the critters that help in things like your phosphate cycle or your nitrogen cycle um, or just natural aeration and allowing the microbes to get enough air and water. And it's just, it's a microbial dream. So because it is the hub for both microbial activity and nutrients, um, you would probably be wondering what the pH is. Well, it's a neutral seven, which makes it even more attractive for nutrients and for microbial activity because it's not acidic and it's not alkaline. It allows for a wide range of microbes to hang out in because it is neutral and it is safe. It also is really great for plants because at a pH of seven, it means all the nutrient within it that is held within it is very bioavailable. It also is really great in acidic soils, so peat moss or coconut choir systems. It is going to help to neutralize that acidic soil and help bring it up to a level that is a ha a plant happy, a plant happy pH level for nutrient delivery. It is not organic, so therefore, because it is inorganic, it doesn't break down over time. So once you add it to your soil, whether it's an outdoor setting or an indoor setting, it's going to last for many years to come, which is important 
because I think it's great in for using in a peat moss or a coconut system, which would be indoor potted plant scenario. It's really great at neutralizing that pH, which is valuable to both microbial activity and also nutrients, but it's also valuable in an outdoor setting. Now, the cost of this stuff may be the barrier to entry of using this in an outdoor setting, but it, I do think it would work some pretty serious miracles in a clay or even in a sandy soil. So in a sandy soil, because of the high level of micropores on the outside of the cinderite compared to pumice, which has more of the macro pores, because there are so many micro pores on the outside of cinderite, I think it would be really great at retaining water and moisture, which would help if you are in a sandy soil or under high heat or high evapotranspiration system. So systems where you're noticing water is coming out of the system very quickly, I think cinderite would be very valuable there. I also think cinderite would be very valuable, but not as valuable as something like pumice in a clay soil system. So if I had a clay soil system and I had to pick between pumice and cinderite, I would always pick pumice. However, if cinderite is the cheaper option in your area, then cinderite is actually, again, very valuable to a clay soil system because it's going to add that aeration to the system. Um, which are thinking, well, if it retains water, how is it adding air? And it comes down to that macro micro pores again, because those micro pores are going to be larger than the pores that are in the clay system. It's going to act as more of the aeration side compared to the clay. So I, th I think it would work in both systems, but again, it depends on the price. The reason why I talk about cinderite in an outdoor system is because it is more accessible to a majority of my viewers who are in North America and the US and Canada. Cinderite is made and manufactured and mined in our area, whereas pumice is a little bit harder for us to find. Now, I think that there are other options for clay soils, and I am doing a video on that because that is something that is highly requested, but it is something that you can choose to look at if you wish to. In a potting soil system, it uh, doesn't replace pumice or perlite. It would be more like a vermiculite in my mind. So it's more of a water retaining system. Um, I wouldn't use, I wouldn't forego pumice or perlite for cinderite. I, you would still wanna add those other two only because the water retention for cinderite is just slightly too high. However, if you are in a hot area and you're noticing that your containers are drying out very, very quickly in your house pound scenario, then yeah, Cinderite is the solution for you. It's the funniest part about the soil amendments. I refuse to give you a potting soil recipe because that doesn't exist. All the information I give you is to only help you make a decision on what's going to work for you and to use trial and error to make that decision. It's completely dependent on what heat or what, how much sunlight you get, whether or not you have grow lights, what kind of grow lights you have, what type of plants you have, how hot you run your home, or if you have AC. It, it all depends. There's so many factors that there's no such thing as a perfect soil recipe. So if you're noticing that your pots are drying out too quickly, then cinderite may be your answer. I hope you found this helpful for everyone that asked about cinderite. And for those of you that didn't know cinderite existed, did you learn something new in this video? If you did, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below what you did learn. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Have a very Merry Christmas and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.